Welcome, good morning. Welcome to Meda Week, a new edition of this one-of-a-kind space to network and share experiences with the aim of identifying concrete and innovating solutions and trends that will shape the region and it will help the economic ecosystem move forward in the post-COVID area. Uh, today I have a great uh, panel with me and uh, I welcome them, but I welcome as well all the decision makers from the largest Mediterranean, European and international company, as well as the worldwide professionals for the main multilateral institutions operating in the Mediterranean that join us. Welcome all to this uh, forum. So to start on, let me please introduce you this panel of today where we will be discussing the geopolitical impact and the consequences of the pandemic, right? We need now to understand better this impact and how it will uh, expand a lot of uh, important geopolitical considerations. I invite you to uh, join me. I invite you uh, to join. Welcome this morning. I mean, uh, Murkazel, welcome. Hello, good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Afternoon. Raul Gonzalez as well. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Adel Ben Youssef, good morning. Hello and bonjour from Bordeaux. <laughs> bonjour, bonjour Bordeaux. Jalil Mekowar, good morning. Good, very early morning from Toronto. Great to be with you. Very early morning. Your first coffee is on us today, uh, Jalil. <laughs> Luis Labbe, good morning. Bonjour. Bonjour de Cambrai, dans le nord de la France, et il fait très beau. Hola, salutations au nord de la France, aussi Antonio Santos del Valle. Buenos días. Buenos días, bonjour, good night. Espero que se encuentren bien todos. I hope you feel well. Yes, I'm very happy to be able to join a uh, so important panel in this session. Uh, this uh, team of uh, great professionals. And uh, let's just start with the first presentation. I will, will invite Mr. Raul Gonzalez. He's the CIO MEA of Barcelo Hotel Groups, which is the second most important hotel chain in Spain and one of the most important in the world with more than 250 to 50 hotels spread over um, over more than 22 countries. Uh, Mr. Raul Gonzalez, states that he is moved by commission by common values to the brand to barcelo brand such as dedication innovation and leadership on your representation mr raul gonzalez we are gonna go around this uh, COVID impact on our industry the first wave uh, closed almost all units uh, but now with the vaccine good news we are starting to recover we are starting to see some new uh, reopenings from them are on uh, on their way we have big issues we had a few bookings in this period we had uh, this uh, pricing nightmare we had continuous cancellations all during this season but now it's time to recover and it's time to focus on new strategies for your regions and for barcelo as well let's go on welcome again and let's go with your presentation thank you very much for joining us today raul now, thank you to you. Um, first of all, I, I think that Bakun and, and all the good news that we have during the last days, I think that they still are not um, in the bookings. I think are more in our minds, in our wishes. Mm -hmm. But um, if it is possible, we can uh, show the, the small presentation that can, can be useful for trying to explain and try to summarize the, the more important ideas. Can you go to the, to the next slide, please? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I will try to explain a little bit the, the, the effects of uh, COVID-19. And later on, I will try to, to explain how we are working with it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can move, please. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, only uh, the, the first idea is how important is the the sector for for the Mediterranean countries. I think that it's important to say that uh, 
more than 20% of the total international tourist arrivals are focused in the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. 10 of the, of the countries in the region are in the top 50 most visited in the world mm -hmm. and is the second most affected region in the world mm -hmm. after Northeast Asia in tourist arrivals is 22 percent reduction year to day in, in the, with the figures that we have at the end of September. Hmm? Can, can we go to the, to the next page, please, to the next slide? Yes, move to the... Yeah. This is like Eva had explained at the beginning. Um, we closed in the, in the region uh, almost... Uh, 1%, 100% of the hotels. We only maintain open five hotels in the in the portfolio that we have in in, in Europe and the Mediterranean uh, countries. Only with this hospitalis, uh, hospitals and uh, for human resources, no no more. No? And today we have 75% reopened of the portfolio. And in the in the chart you can see more or less how when we open the hotels that you see in July was the most important month for for the reopening. But at the moment, at the same time, we are closing some properties. For instance, last week we closed uh, two hotels in Barcelona because the occupancy level at the moment is less than ten percent in many uh, many areas. Mm -hmm in many cities, in many destinations. And uh, we are analyzing every day if we can open new hotels or we must to close some hotels that we open recently. Mm -hmm. uh, move to the to next slide, please. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, that we can uh, say that we see three different trends during the period. No? Is uh, the demand had been very weak and very last minute and i think that the the most important point had been the the restrictions to the mobility i think the people when they can move when the people can travel we see that the demand recover but with so many restrictions that we have at the moment the the demand is very very weak we had so many cancellations in many weeks we have more cancellations than new reservations. And obviously the consequence is that the, the price had fallen mm, during the period. Mm. This is the, the most important trend that we have saw during these months. No? Move, please. Uh, change to the, to the next slide. Yes. And how we can do the yesterday for the recovery, no? I, I tried to explain, please, go ahead. Uh, please uh, come back one. Yes. Mm, the next page. Mm, yes. And I think that it's clear that the people want to feel, yes, feel safe. And we had um, introduced a new protocol that we had called We Care About You with many, many items in all the departments at the hotel. And we had analyzed the customer journey and we had tried to protect to our employees and to the uh, customers for have to, to, to have a very uh, safe experience. And we have changed um, many, many points. But Prey, I think it's interesting how uh, fast is moving the, the uh, needs of the, our customers. I remember when we reopened one hotel in the Czech Republic hmm, in, in, one, uh, Ju in June uh, 1st, and the people want that we uh, left the, the food and knocked the door and the waiter 
left the, in the space. A few days later, the, the customers asked for the buffet and for all the F&B experience. The people don't want to have a reduced experience when they go, uh, they come to the hotels. No? Please uh, move to the next page, if you can. Hmm? Yes. Um, that means, no, I'm sorry. Uh, next, next slide, please. No. Uh, no, no, no. The previous one, please. Yes. I'm sorry, I, I understand that we have some technical problems with the presentation. But uh, like you can see the, the situation with the pandemic is like now with a technical issue. It's a little bit complicated because everything is changing very quickly. Okay, thanks. Yeah, it's, the, it's this one. Okay, thanks. No, the other one. This one, please. Wait, wait a second. Um, uh, I think that this is a trend that I, I have shown in all the countries that we have present is um, clearly the demand is very domestic um, uh, in, in a space of uh, 200 kilometers from the home is the, the most important demand for the, for the hotels. Uh, the people want to travel by car. Um, the people don't want at the moment to use planes or trains and during the summer and even now, the people want to move by car. Hmm? Um, very short term, we have during the last couple of weeks, uh, many reservations. Also during the day, we have many reservations. Hmm? Uh, the people, um, the, the loyalty program is working very well. The people that know our hotels they, they feel enough comfortable they want to, to uh, do a reservation with us and have an experience with us. The people uh, need flexibility. Hmm? The people are not ready to do a, a reservation with um, no uh, possibility to change the dates of the state because they are very worried with all the changes. And probably this is one of the main issues that we have, is that the people is worried if the government can change and have, uh, put the people in quarantine or ask for PCR test or any other uh, requirements. And the people is, is worried about it. Mm -hmm. And that means that the target is more, it is more local. No? And we are trying to, to think a new, um, um, ways to monitorize our hotels with co-working space or room office or mm, hybrid events between virtual and uh, with uh, uh, people uh, at, this, at the hotel or staycations or, or many, many ways to, to try to use the hotels for the customers. We can move to the, to the next page, please. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, we will see some changes that we maintain in the long term. And I think that other things will remove and will be similar to the previous period to the, to the pandemic. But I see that the, some trends that will, uh, will be there and um, we, we had in the, in the past, like uh, sustainability, the, I think that we'll see more focus, more people worry about the sustainability of the hotel, hmm? probably contactless, less papers, less consuming plastic. I think that will be a very important trend in the future. I think that the people will be more worried about uh, consume of energy and try to have a world 
more um, sustainable in the long term, and I think more local economy. And we we had um, the idea to to be to try to be local, try to be adapted to each country. That means that the gastronomy, decoration, the the building uh, must be different in every country, in every place, and uh, I think that will be more focus in try to have more local suppliers to be more sustainable in the long term. Mm? And I think this is the, the idea that I can explain in this uh, short period of time and more than happy to, to answer to the Q&A. Thank you very much, uh, Raul, for your expositions. We, we, we see that the, we just came in a time where decisions have to be made very, very fast. And it is not easy at all when you are running so many units in so many different scenarios, lockdowns and, and regulations and frontiers, opening and closings. And that's, this must be really a hell now, trying to only, make only good two, decisions. Only two Sorry? examples, Eva. Uh, only I can, I can say to you two examples. One, we, we, the idea was to open one hotel in Ibiza this summer. We joined the people for opening the hotel and the, the British government um, introduced the quarantine for all the British people coming back from Spain. And the people work only 24 hours preparing the opening of the hotel because we, we never opened the hotel because it was not possible. And with all the protocol that we had introduced for safe to the employees and to the customers, we work during three months and we change in few hours some elements because the experience what we try to put in practice uh, to introduce at the hotel we ma we we change some elements because it was not possible to do yeah, and the experience of the customer was very uh degraded very reduced mm -hmm. is a is a, is unbelievable how how fast it changes okay but Although we need to be very agile on these day-to-day -day changes, it is important to have a large vision and a strategic vision because, of course, we're going to recover. Of course, uh, we're going to find a vaccine. We're going to be back traveling. We're going to be back going to hotels. So that's 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 reality. Uh, we don't know when it will be back again uh, as 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 we were living. No, that these these great uh, times of uh, 2019, but we will be back on this situation. So uh, a future good vision is needed now when making some strategic decisions. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that we we must work in two different scenarios. One is in the in the short term that the key point is how we can survive with this uh, disaster because it's a, a real disaster. And at the same time, we must to prepare the, the company, the group for the for the future. And obviously, I, I think it was very interesting. I, I, I talked with many people during the April and May for trying to understand the situation. And one of the conversations was with the owner of one, the, the main hotel chain in, in, in Central Africa. And he explained me, uh, Raul, um, during the Ebola, it was terrible. And we changed many, many protocols. But few months later, when Ebola um, finished, we come back to a, a many things that we never expected that, that recover. Hmm? That means, for instance, some people have said that Buffet is died. Uh, I don't think so. I think that the people, the customer, love Buffet because they want to choose, they want to to do for, for their own. And if you try to reduce the, the offer for the customer, they are not happy. And at the end of the day, our, our business must be try how we can uh, transmit the happiness to the, to the people. No? And um, an other point that is important, the people don't want to go to hospitals. They want to go to hotels and enjoy. Hmm? And it's not easy in this time to protect to the people, to feel safe, but don't feel that you are in a hospital. 
it's a balance that is not easy. That's right. We are in an industry where we sell experiences and that's all about to build experiences for people. Thank you very much, uh, Raul. And I will be welcoming, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Mo Carcel. I mean, hello, good morning. Bonjour. I mean, is the president of Golden Tulip Mena, Louvre. Good morning. I would like to briefly uh, introduce um, our our next next uh, speaker, and it's difficult because uh, Mr. Min, you have a great biography, and I will try to make a small uh, brief about it. You are the president of Louvre Hotels Group, Golden Tulip Mena, and Flamingo Hospitality Management. And you are as well the driving force behind the launch of some of the most successful hotels in the region. You've created your own regionally inspired hospitality projects with Flamingo Hospitality Management Company, which started in 1998 with just three employees. And today, your company operates through the Middle East, the North Africa region, Georgia and Kyrgyzstan with more than 60 hotels. You are advisory board member of the Arabian Hotel Investment Conference and the Emirate Academy of Hospitality Management in Dubai, as well of uh, Al Okair Group of Tourism and Development and of the Lebanese American University in Beirut. You are as well vice president of Mediterranean Hotels and Restaurant Association, the Middle East of International Hotels and Restaurant Association, and you are as well the recipient of numerous awards and recognitions, including Hotelier Middle East. Uh, you are a veteran lecturer and speaker in major universities and events as the Arabian Hotel Investment Conference, uh, ASCAME here in Barcelona, or the Hotel Management Conference in Georgia. It's an extraordinary uh, CV. Uh, Mr. Amin, uh, welcome back. Uh, I think you're going to share today with us an extraordinary vision of yours of uh, how to work on a better tourism in our region. Thank you. Uh, I don't think this is uh, enough said today to be part of ASCAME. Uh, Thanks for having this conference, even at a distance. Uh, as we move forward with the vaccine being launched, hopefully in December and beyond, uh, what remains important is not only to gain the positive aspect of our tourism and hospitality business on a psychological approach but also on physiological platform for the future of our business we are the most sensitive industry in the world and as you have mentioned earlier on eva we need to have a concrete and innovative briefing of our presentations and I was thinking when I received the invitation, what to address? Everybody talks about every hotel chain addresses, all such talks about and the protocols, applications, inspection. We carried out in our hotels inspections with high specialized companies to carry out all the COVID-19 safety for all safety of our customers our employees our owners our assets our visitors our suppliers and by thinking what to address i thought well this is the most beautiful territory in the world the mediterranean coast solidarity yes indeed and if I may have now the first slide, please, introduction. Can I have the presentation, the first slide, please? Uh, 
هلو 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 ار وي كونكتد الو الو ار وي كونكتد مستر مكارسيل يو ار كونكتد بليز كاري اون وذ يور سبيتش الو الو بليز سير كاري اون يو ار اون Yeah, so in my brief today, I will take you through the territory that everybody knows about, with, which means the most beautiful destination in the world, the Mediterranean coast, and uh, thinking along the way to what to address as many hoteliers and all hotel chains and everyone's, and according to the uh, World Health Organization, we had to apply similar protocols and uh, take care of safety and sustainability etc so i thought to address such a concrete and in innovative approach at a high level to what could be to be able with my input experience to contribute to askami and askami leading the way throughout the region So if I may have the next slide, please. With the countries that we have in this beautiful region, the 25 countries, as well as some other countries that have coastlines. Next slide, please. So I believe the way forward for Askami and for the Mediterranean coasts and countries at a high level is indeed to create a Mediterranean association. It could be an association, it could be a federation, and I would like it to be governed and part of ASCAMI. So this association shall govern the country's tourism sector and hospitality sector, which means we need to form such association or such federation and go visit each and every ministry of tourism and establish the do's and don'ts in this regard uh, consequently to invite askami to play a major role and remain the leader so uh, this idea is from me to askami as to create a new avenue to establish the association and all the way to move on. As to the association objectives, next slide, please. I thought to briefly address the audience. <clears throat> we need to have, we need to invite all such countries to participate. And I believe this will become a snowball due to my belief in its success. So we can start with the high-level countries like Spain, Barcelona, Ascami, and all the way to start by such countries on the coast that are rich within their budgets. The association should work with the UNWTO and with IHRA as to form the strategies and how to work together post-COVID-19. So to be concrete, to be innovative at a high level, we need to bring in those high-level established associations as IHRA, World Tourism Organization, and indeed ASCAMI to be the moderator and maybe to have an office in ASCAMI and to know who to form in this association. 
next will be to organize at least twice a year a symposium in such symposium we can invite minister of tourism as they participate in the budget and to establish the way forward in this regard uh, then the second symposium can be held in any other country that may offer its services and they may offer to be hosting such symposium and i would be delighted to meet with the ASCAMI responsibles and officers to establish such guidelines take it to the next level to the ministries or to the ASCAMI uh, high uh, committee and uh, indeed to the UNWTO many leaders in our sector have indeed preached on sustainability the next generation as to the importance and to complement what Raoul has mentioned we have sustainability but what is important is for our target audience for this particular establishment of symposium and the way forward is loyalty programs to our Mediterranean hotels digital marketing online etc and then we can complement the World Health Organization next slide please by formalizing new protocols and to establish such prerequisites for sustainability as a future 99% of every single country and every single ministry and every single company talk about sustainability and to what extent they do apply such protocols I can tell you it remains doubtful and hazardous so we need to establish promotions that relate to such avenues we need to complement it by technology and by digital marketing as to attract the world to this Mediterranean coast for tourism thus to establish those protocols with the World Health Organization together next slide please we can indeed promote the destination in Northern Europe they love to come to the Mediterranean weather Russia the Balkans Asia North and South America Canada as such we need also for safety and security to talk about easement on borders crossing between countries and to realize that it is a small world after all and last but not least on this is to form to appoint ambassadors of ASCAMI in every country they are part of such a chamber of commerces ministry of tourism or tourism associations in these given countries and these will have such ambassador to organize it to have three-year life three-year term and then to evaluate achievement for the next generation next slide please the status and I highly believe that the three P's are important we need to invite to us as private sector we need to invite the public sector to form a partnership I want to hear salute Ahmad al wakil and Anwar Zibawi of Askami and indeed you Eva as well for having this timing together this time and to establish what could be a new initiative again as you mentioned earlier concrete and innovative approach 
Thus, these initiatives require diligent work, keeping our enthusiasm of this wonderful territory, this wonderful Mediterranean destination and motivation. But all this will not happen and it cannot occur if we don't have perseverance for such work that we can do. We remain, and on behalf of Ihra, unfortunately, Dr. Aidi could not attend. And we need to participate and I believe to form a workshop in this regard. And I remain at your disposal in Askami. Very important to invite and to address ministers of tourism, tourism associations, or such bodies in these respective countries and inviting them and Askami is the core of this initiative. In conclusion, next slide please. In conclusion, it is important to have such a value proposition for the territory. And to sum it up, post COVID-19 to remain for sustainability, for safety and conformity. We need to rebound. We cannot stay idle and then like a mailbox. We need to rebound. We need to show our solidarity and Askami has led the way all these years, taking us post COVID-19 to remain concrete and innovative at a high level, reaching a great deal of protocol on sustainability, on safety, and all the way on all protocols to apply. Our lives are becoming different post COVID-19. And such initiative cannot happen without our private and public partnership all the way to the Association for Tourism and Hospitality that we have lived in for all such years and such decades. Thank you. I remain available for any strategic review to establish with ASCAMI and I believe it is time to be stronger, yet to remain together in the Mediterranean coast. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Eva. Thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, it's uh, it's, it's wonderful the way that this, uh, this uh, COVID has made us realize the importance of working together. This is extraordinary because in, in any country all over the world, we have realized the power of being uh, together, of growing stronger together. And I think that your exposition, I mean, has been a great resume of the aim of uh, many of us to work for a better industry and to work more coordinated and to unite our, our forces. We are one of the most promising regions in the world. We are 10 on the top 50 most visited countries in the world. So we are a, a super power region. And I do really thank you for, uh, for, for, for sharing with us and for inviting us to your, to your vision and to your proposition. Thank you. All right, so let's uh, move on on our presentations uh, this morning and let's jump to uh, technology because digitalization is a key at the uh, industry strategy and many organizations they've been working hard on implementing digital processes to their operations and marketing but but we are we, we have still a long way uh, to go a long way in front um, of us and uh, how data science and technology helps uh, to transform hospitality businesses and drive their commercial and final performance. We have uh, today with us Jalil Mekwar and Adel Ben Yosef. Uh, hello, good morning, both of you. Bonjour. Bonjour. Hello, good morning. 
morning. Uh, I, Adele Ben Joseph, CTO of Innovate Solutions. You work with uh, enterprise customers to implement big data solutions, software, hardware, and consulting, and help them to define big data strategies by developing a highly skilled workforce experience at big data, data science, and artificial intelligence from first thought to implementation, implementation and beyond. And uh, Lil McWar is the CEO of Innovate uh, Solutions. And you are a visionary, forward thinking and results driving global entrepreneur. You are a, a CEO and board director with a passion for people, excellence in hospitality, innovation and technology and wellness and a 35 year expatriation in Europe, Asia Pacific, Middle East and North America. You have more than 30 years of uh, international hospitality, real estate and wellness experience. And uh, you are here with us together with Adele to tell us how, how, how data science and technology is going to help to transform the industry. Welcome back again. Thank you very much. Let's go with your presentation. So I, I think uh, Jalil uh, uh, will start the presentation. Uh, I will take uh, 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 the head of it on, on some slides uh, and I will uh, uh, probably speak in, in French. So can you, uh, can you just switch between uh, me and Jalil, please? So I thank you. I think I'm I think I'm on now. Okay, great. Well, um, I uh, just uh, jumping into uh, into the, the the heart of the subject. Um, I tried to summarize uh, thirty years of of experience in hospitality into a simple formula, um, and uh, and uh, obviously based on this formula, I tried to see how we we can help and what solution we can bring in. And uh, I would say that uh, our industry has suffered uh, and is suffering a systemic problem, which is a combination of a few elements. One is we are in a very volatile demand environment. Um, I think uh, both uh, Raoul and Amin have uh, emphasized on that when hospitality, when the world goes, the world economy goes well, hospitality goes very well. And when the world economy goes not so well, hospitality goes even worse. So very volatile demand uh, environment. And we are also in an environment that is characterized by high fixed costs, be it um, on the people side or on the asset side. We are an asset intensive industry. We are a people intensive industry. And therefore we have high fixed costs. So these two, these two combined together, and I would say multiplied by poor information, uh, when I say poor information is I think our industry is data rich, but information poor. Why? Because we are very, very siloed. We have siloed technologies. Uh, each piece is dealing with one specific aspect of our business. Uh, we have fairly siloed organizations, departments. Uh, we are also fairly siloed between the different constituents. Uh, ownership groups versus operators versus asset managers and lenders. So we have quite a lot of silos and I think it is time to break those silos. So the combination of those of those uh, three elements, uh, in my view, leads to value destruction rather than building up value. And it could be enterprise value, it could be reputation value, it could be uh, asset value. Uh, but in any case, um, if we don't try to sort of uh, find um, a systemic way of addressing this, this, this uh, systemic problem, then we will continue over and over and the next crisis will, will further impact our industry and so on. So um, I believe that a systemic problem requires a systemic and holistic solution. Um, thank you. 
So um, what we've been working on and uh, for the last uh, couple of years, um, and I left my fairly comfortable uh, corporate seat um, where I had spent, as I mentioned earlier, 30 years of my life, um, either on the operator side or on the ownership group side or on the advisory and asset management side. So I um, navigated around these, these environments, created a platform uh, and a solution, a holistic solution that leverages this hospitality expertise uh, for all businesses, all, all verticals rather within the hospitality, be it rooms and food and beverage and wellness and commercial, financial, and all the business functions, uh, which is commercial, financial, um, investment, etc. But this is not good enough, obviously, uh, because there's lots of people out there that have great expertise in hospitality. Um, so we needed to combine that with data science and intelligent technology in order to come up with a, uh, a holistic solution. Uh, data science, uh, meaning enterprise data, using enterprise data, using big data, and on the technology side, using the newest and the latest technologies, uh, be it artificial intelligence, business automation, etc. So that's how we came up with with Innovate um, uh, to to address this particular um, uh, challenges that we have. Uh, next slide, please. So how does that work? Uh, so Innovate is a technological platform. It's a uh, software as a service uh, or a cloud-based solution that really addresses uh, or starts with data integration, as you probably may or may not know, but um, we collect and gather a huge amount of data coming for a large number of um, diverse sources and, and very eclectic uh, and very disjoint and disconnected. So first step is for us, uh, which is quite a big challenge, is to integrate all this data, harmonize it, take data from all our enterprise systems, our property management system, our point of sale system, our finance and accounting system, our ERP, our building management system, our uh, and, and you name it, our IPTV system, our key lock system, you name it. There is uh, quite a large number of different systems in the hotel, up to about 30, 40 systems. Um, an average hotel uses usually between 12 and 15 different systems. And each one of them, there is some very, very light connection between them, but we don't leverage the data uh, from those systems. So all these enterprise or internal systems, uh, we, we, we gather the, the, uh, the, the lowest level or the highest level of detail from these systems and put them together. We also collect big data uh, information uh, that come from a number of other sources, um, weather forecast, airport arrival, ministries of tourism, uh, uh, or uh, global organizations, uh, banks, uh, you name it. Uh, so all this data are, are also put together, integrated and, and um, harmonized together with col collaborative data. That in itself, is a huge endeavor, but that's not good enough because uh, we will end up having a lot of data, better organized, better connected, but still a lot of data. So how do we translate that into something meaningful? That's where we move to the second uh, step, which is analytics intelligence, which uh, basically consists in uh, providing descriptive analytics, predictive analytics, and prescriptive analytics. And what does that mean is that it's nice to have all this data, uh, we translate that into something that is um, uh, analytically means something. Uh, so we extract automatically insights and recommendations and uh, automated insight based on the correlation of all this information. So we can make predictions, we can make recommendations uh, into taking this to, uh, to the next uh, uh, step. And the third uh, aspect is the business automation. So once you have translated all this data into information and that becomes knowledge, then how, what do you do with that? Uh, you know, what are the, 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 the necessary steps? I'm sure that uh, we will all agree that there are a, a, a lot of uh, steps that um, are required because of the diverse environments that we evolve in. And uh, hotels and hospitality in general, hotels, restaurants, and. Uh, and the uh, the ecosystem around it 
it is a complex environment. Uh, there's a lot of components, a lot of elements, and we can fairly easily get lost in the middle of all of that. So being able to create um, collaborative action plans, which are meaningful based on information, based on data, based on data science, um, having people collaborate together instead of working in different silos uh, into building the right action plans and the right actions, being able to monitor the results, uh, being able to gain, uh, to increase uh, reliability, to increase uh, ownership, uh, to increase uh, responsibility uh, is critical and to have also a great deal of transparency. Uh, so the platform that we propose also pro uh, has um, a collaborative action plan, uh, automated and collaborative action plan, which is, which is critical. But also it's important to share knowledge. So we want to transfer the knowledge across people. We want to democratize access to knowledge, to information, uh, et cetera, rather than to centralize it in only a few hands and a few uh, lu lucky hands, I would say. That's our responsibility to our community, to our employees, uh, to our owners or to our operators, regardless of, of which side we are on, to transfer that knowledge and to transfer it in a way that is meaningful. And all of that in managed by workflow. So basically the idea is to start with data, transform it into information that gets and becomes knowledge that helps us to make decision. Those decisions will, 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 will define which actions we're going to take and that would lead to ultimate performance. Uh, so that's how, uh, so that's our vision uh, for the platform and how this is how the platform uh, functions. Um, next uh, slide, please. And uh, obviously this has to be uh, a holistic, but also a modular solution. We would like, or we, we are addressing all aspects of the, of the uh, uh, hospitality industry. Um, the commercial aspect, operational aspect, financial aspect, investment, environmental, organizational. So all of these are modules. We can't force people to consume everything we, we, we have on the, on, the, on, on the platform or the whole solution. So therefore, it's very, very modular. And people, organizations, either owners, operators, asset managers, advisors, lenders, will pick and choose which module makes more sense for them. Um, in, in order to drive their performance, drive their results, monitor the performance, uh, and ultimately drive the asset value. Uh, next, please. Thank you. So very, very briefly, uh, just to, to have a, an idea, because it's nice to hear about this uh, theoretical stuff, but what does it mean? It means that, uh, you, you know, what we, we think is it is important to have a one-stop shop that covers all aspects of the of the of the industry and of our business <clears throat> where we could like we could see in real time uh, i think eva earlier was was uh, insisting on how critical uh, with raul it was to make very fast decisions you can't make fast decisions if you don't have fast and accurate data and information uh, at your fingertips so real time is critical Versatile is critical uh, to have versatile analytics, to be able to be very agile and very flexible. Uh, holistic and, and, and multi-level is critical because you need to be able to go deep down to the level of detail that you want on the commercial side, on the financial side, for the room side or food and beverage or spa or any other or energy consumption or any other information. You need to be able instantly to get down to very, very granular information and detail without having to worry about where the information comes from etc um, and that's what is in, what is critical to have multi-filtering granular level of detail and the bottom part really there is the intelligent actionable insights so it's all of nice to have all these graphs and tables and numbers and and all of that but what does it mean in my life uh, what are the key recommendations so the system would automatically through artificial intelligence decipher the code of all this information coming from inside but also from outside of, of uh, our, our own uh, business environment and, and, and hotels and, and restaurants and then propose concrete um, intelligent insights uh, so what are the key drivers what are the key things i should be looking at today or this week or this month uh, what should i be actioning and then based on that you choose which one you action etc so it's not only just beautiful graphs and tables and all of that it's also meaningful action 
and meaningful rather uh, insight that would lead to uh, to 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 action. Uh, next, please. I think we're getting into the uh, the technological side. I'm going to hand over to uh, to Adel, our chief technology officer, who would be much better suited to to talk about this. So, uh, over to you, Adel. Can we uh, switch to Adel, please? Oui, merci, Jalil. Yes, sir. thank you very much, Jalil. Jalil, thank you for providing uh, the vision of Innovate uh, on our platform. So the platform that we are building right now. This platform starts from data. So the most essential part is to be able to capture and integrate and harmonize all the data we have. These data already uh, exist in the information legacy of hotels. As Jalil said, hotels have plenty of data but are, have very poor insights or information in connection with this data. So the project that we are building allows us to integrate all types of data, uh, whether they are structured or non-structured, and we can integrate data in real time. And then it's about technology. So we'll be able to store this uh, data and deal with it uh, in uh, public environments, clouds or private clouds, in order for any uh, hotel company, hotel business to uh, uh, use this data so we have a highly scalable uh, architecture and highly distributed architecture so we can have high performances uh, in terms of processes this is um, unforeseen so we use all the technologies used by the world leaders of uh, the internet whether Google uh, Facebook or LinkedIn so we use the same kind of technology architectures uh, in order to reach uh, unprecedented performances. Now, these uh, systems are highly distributed and there are also a uh, power cut tolerance. So, so uh, the last purpose is uh, to make sure that company using these services have no interruption in terms of services and service supply. And so they, they would be able to use these uh, data uh, constantly, data coming from our innovative uh, architectures. So, so our architectures called Innovate Architectures, relying on microservices applications. So it's a, a so-called microservice-oriented uh, architecture. I hope that I uh, not using too many technological terms, uh, but it's a microservice type of architecture and it relies on fundamental principles. So it's security by default and privacy by design, which means that from the very outset of uh, the construction of our environment, we make sure that we comply with uh, regulations and we also make sure that we uh, comply with uh, the safety uh, of our data, so the, our clients' data, but also the data we generate through our different algorithms. And so, as I said, compliance, uh, the fact that we are compliant with regulations, well, this is reassuring for users, uh, hotel businesses, but also potential end users as well in terms of uh, data privacy, so uh, in compliance with the RGRPD. Now, I'm going to open up uh, the uh, car boot in order to see uh, what's inside. And so just to give you an overview of uh, what it means uh, with regards to uh, software architecture and hardware architecture. Next slide, please. Thank you. So. As we said earlier, our architecture allows us to engineer uh, data from different sources, whether they are structured or not structured. So we uh, build uh, our system on uh, ingestion uh, capacities of different uh, types of data, input uh, capacities of, uh, let's say, 
uh, social network data or website data or uh, current document data. It can be Excel spreadsheets, uh, documents uh, that w were used for financial analysis. So we can uh, have this as an input and we store it into uh, distributed systems with modern architectures that will allow us to develop algorithms, uh, so data science algorithms and artificial intelligence uh, algorithms or um, browsers or recommendation browsers, uh, search engines and so on. So we uh, uh, have all these components to be able to make decisions. So obviously you have analytical uh, decisions in terms of uh, prevention. So it can be preventive analytics or prescriptive analytics. This type of architecture can be used in uh, a closed environment, whereby you don't have to uh, set up anything at uh, you know the client's site. You don't have to set up a software. You can uh, go through different uh, browsers or mobile interfaces or tablets. But we also have another solution to build it in side. Uh, so to have a built-in uh, project in current existing systems, such as a financial system, in order to enrich financial analysis and provide further more, uh, for, uh, further capacity, sorry, in order to uh, make uh, better decisions. The last uh, thing that we have to say is that the, this agnostic cloud uh, idea, so we can also be completely independent from any cloud operator in order to be much more flexible and we have much more integration capacity in the current uh, business environments. Now, I'd like to finish off by saying that uh, the uh, volatility of our in hotel and hospitality environments uh, require that everybody works in, uh, in the synchronization process and we want to reach this synchronization in real time. So at any time, people uh, who have to make decisions in order to improve uh, the hotel management, well, they have to make decisions on uh, fresh uh, data, updated data and almost in real time data. So that's what we do with these built data solutions with hardware and software and everything is secure and complies with um, data privacy regulations and we define uh, data analytics strategies uh, as from the very uh, first uh, operational steps. So the Inhovate uh, platform that we offer allows us to integrate a large variety of isolated systems, but also integrate different uh, data from different functions. So all the teams can actually collaborate to use these fragmented data into a normative, intelligent uh, um, action and, and decision making. So I think that I've uh, given you an overview of the technical part of our platform, of our architecture. So I'll hand over again to Jalil uh, so that he finish off his uh, presentation, our presentation. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'm available to you if you have. Jalil, thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, uh, Adel. Uh, Jalil, you've said something uh, in the beginning of the presentation, which is great. We have a lot of data but we have uh, not much information that gives us uh, a great opportunity to work uh, with all this data, to integrate this data, to stop working on silos and to take profit of this um, ingenious quantity of data that we make in, in the whole uh, customer journey, right? Every day in, in thousands and thousands of destinations by millions of millions of uh, travelers and organizations. Thank you both uh, very much. I think it has been very enlightening on how technology help us to understand, to get this knowledge out of data and to convert it in, in, in this information that help us to be more agile and more strategic in our decisions. Thank you both very much. And uh, let's uh, move to... Um,
Luis uh, Labe, Luis. Uh... Hello, bonjour, Luis. Bonjour. Uh, you've been since uh, 1977 in the private and public, and you've been immersed him in industry, trade, agriculture, services, public administrations, local, national, and international, and private companies. You've conducted national and international negotiations, and uh, you know a lot about security, and you have a great presentation today for us because uh, the risk is not just COVID, is it? We have uh, many hey. other risks. And I think that your vision will help us to understand that it's not only COVID, but what is risk about in our industry. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. The stage is yours. Will uh, speak English. Uh, sorry, I will speak French. And um, the reason why I was interested in uh, hotel business, the hotel industry, is because uh, I saw that the private clients, when they are expatriated, are always under the uh, responsibility of their employers in terms of security, of safety. So from there, companies book hotels only if they have some safety uh, security safety uh, guarantee that the, the, their client their employees will be safe can i uh, show the first slide yes good the second one okay the attractiveness of the hotel industry is obviously the destination but it's also the know-how in uh, safety prevention uh, next slide please the customer when he or she travels and knows that there might be a risk like terrorist attacks attack and also a criminal and um, um, sanitary health uh, sanitary risk so when the customer knows the risks involved the uh, hotels must be in the position of providing some solutions i will go through the risks so first of all the uh, terrorism risk if uh, we make a balance of all the uh, countries at risk, the first one is France and the least one is Spain. So to tackle terrorism, obviously it's uh, the responsibility of the uh, govern of the state, but the uh, hotel managers must put in must implement a lot of different uh, scenarios of exit scenarios let's say and this must be implemented before the crisis itself and it must be done in collaboration with the uh, police forces second uh, next slide in terms of safety during the flight uh, we also work in collaboration with the police and we need to transfer the information of the customers it also entails the uh, site surveillance and the possibility to communicate when, when there's some alert and the possibility to do some uh, drill Je ne m'étendrai pas sur les cyber I'm not going to extend about uh, cyber risks because I'm not an expert. I'm not performant at all on this sector, but it's true that nowadays the customer at the hotel wants a Wi-Fi connection and he prefers or she prefers to uh, uh, be safe and, uh, and to be sure that their data will be guaranteed, their, their, their protection the data will be protected. Then the 
health risk. Du choix de la destination. The sanitary risk depends on the destination, obviously, depends on the pandemics and the viruses. And this was a pre existing risk before because we saw in the past that some food security risks would impact an entire region. I will be brief because we know that nowadays we have uh, many, many protocols and recommendations in terms of the sanitary uh, prevention. I'm not going into details. Obviously, we need to do it, and the hotel industry knows how to do it. Next slide. To offer safety and to adapt to it, uh, we need to know the field requirements. And obviously, they will evolve in terms of uh, um, the situation because every month there's news and uh, updates. Once we have implemented the, uh, proceed the processes to prevent the risks, the traveler, whether he travels for business or for leisure, needs to think about the kind of hotel he goes to. They need to know that there's some possibility uh, of uh, terrorism or thieves. But the difference with Airbnb and uh, private rentals is that uh, the customers know th knows these uh, um, sites, these private houses are not uh, referenced by the uh, potential terrorists. And the customers know that they cannot count on a special safety staff on the site. The benefits in order to sell our product. So first, we know that the standards we apply at the hotels are very strict and that they've been um, agreed with the authorities. Then the uh, benefit of the management is it's to guarantee the control, the presence, and the training, and also intervention. The staff, the customer knows that uh, when they are at the hotel, there's uh, some uh, protocols in place that it must be visible and communicated. And uh, finally, the direction uh, is able to invest and coordinate and control and take uh, make decisions. With the current pandemic, the risks are being increased and we need to be transparent. We need to communicate to the customers that we are making a lot of efforts in those risk prevention. The staff, it means that he's uh, trained and he has to apply some special guidelines, some specific guidelines, he is informed and trained about the pandemic, for example, is protected and uh, he has to report any incidents or error in the system. What existed before the pandemic is even more essential today. That means we need to invest in safety, we need to anticipate the risks, we need to evolve. When some risks happen, we need to control that the uh, processes are applied and well applied because now, with the safety processes, it's something very uh, hard to implement for the staff. 
And uh, finally, we need to uh, put this into in comment. We need to share the experiences. We need to get feedback. And uh, with this information, we draw the conclusions. Next slide. The high demand. We know that the high demand nowadays is the safety demand. It's the most important one. And as I said in the introduction, we need to guarantee the safety. It's compulsory for the companies that employ st staff and uh, for the companies that send their staff abroad. We saw that the uh, work organization has to evolve in terms of uh, the processes in uh, uh, the processes of safety measures or in terms of prevention. We need to organize, we need to have a very strong organization, and all of this depends on the individuals, on the collaboration between the collaborators. The technical issues must be delayed or must be speed up in relation with the uh, environment and with the um, uh, new developments. But what is very paramount is that the collaborators know the um, hotel management or the management of any company should know how the lockdown is being experienced by by someone uh, by, by the the staff and there's also the uh, work status problem some employees save their salary and a lot of uh, people under uh, uh, seasonal uh, work cont contracts. Some of them don't have the same experience. They don't have the same status. So the uh, managing director doesn't know it, is not aware of this. The life the community of life in the within the company is not uh, used to this uh, they uh, usually don't know that uh, one person in the staff may have lost everything during a crisis whereas uh, his or her colleague uh, didn't have the same problem and this has consequences uh, this might entail some kind of jealousy within the company. It must uh, bring about conflicts, interpersonal conflicts. And it doesn't have to do with the uh, company uh, f functioning. I it's, it's about the uh, employees themselves. The company cannot know it unless they uh, commit uh, to be close to the staff, they talk to them, they talk to their employees, unless the uh, direct, the, the, the managing director organizes uh, social events, uh, meetings between the uh, staff and also between the collaborators in order to identify the person who are uh, suffering or the uh, potentially stressed person. So it's up to the manager, to the managing director to uh, prevent those issues before they even occur. It's the social cohesion that is key after the COVID-19 era. So. 
we need to develop the uh, trust, to build trust among the staff, and this needs, this uh, requires a common strategy, a common vision. And once we have built this trust and it once it works, the uh, management needs to set a path and they need to say that they are aware of the issues, but that they are going to rebuild uh, the company and uh, rebuild the trust. I would like to conclude on this. The social relationships today are really crucial. The social and interpersonal relationships must be taken into account. And the management has a big responsibility here. It's also an economic uh, factor in companies. If you look at the uh, COVID situation, it's a phenomenon that is common in all the states. There's a high demand of social dialogue among all the countries. A report has been published in September about this, and it emphasizes the importance of the social dialogue. Thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to sharing my vision with you. Thank you very much for your presentation. It's been very interesting to share your views and to see that with the pandemic, we have new challenges ahead and that among all the states, everyone has to change their mindset in order to see what can be done and um, yes, what can be done in the industry. Thank you very much for uh, being here. Good morning. Let me welcome Mr. Antonio Santos del Valle. Good morning. Thank you. How do you do? Fine, thank you. And, and his company, and this is the cherry pie, uh, the, the cherry of the pie uh, of the day, his company he has launched the, uh, the World Tourism identification and what is it what is it just just let me briefly tell you what it is and then antonio will give us the the details because this is really interesting this is an application that will allow the traveler to carry on his mobile his identification on health data the first application that will allow travelers to carry on their mobile phone everything that can help them to move better, faster, and in a more intelligent way. But this is not uh, just uh, an idea of uh, Antonio and his company, Vanderlust. There is some big people behind it that you are making partners with. And I'm really, Antonio, thrilled to listen uh, what is uh, the passport about, what is the World Tourist Identification. Just tell us. Thank you very much for joining us. The stage is yours. Thank you. Eh, bueno, buenos, buenos días, buenas tardes, ya, dependiendo del país. Good afternoon. My gratitude goes first to the Association of Chambers of Commerce of the Mediterranean for inviting me to input into this uh, conference. Medawi Barcelona 2020. Thank you for allowing me to introduce this proposal. We've invested in many time from many people, many experts, uh, from many countries. World Tourist Identification App is an innovation. It uh, supported by the WTO and its membership, since it is an NEO agency. The app World Tourist Identification is a universal tool, comprehensive tool, and free of charge that pulls uh, together a set of services, technical solutions for tourists, holiday makers, when they move about when they travel, it is a useful tool for citizens in their daily businesses. World Tourist Identification is an app, a solution that is innovative in character, providing for helping resuscitate tourism, now rebuilding trust and reinforcing PPPs. 
pandemic implies a turning point in our lives. Therefore, now more than ever, we need to identify opportunities to resuscitate uh, the holiday making industry and trade industry with uh, socially equal participation based environmental, environment friendly, sustainable models based on dialogue, cooperation, reinforcing the bonds shared by the players on the stage. Versus that, concerning agencies, corporations, countries in the Mediterranean, the World Tourist Identification is an application, a software that plays a proactive role versus a pandemic. It's a catalyzer offering solutions to improve the bonds, the relations, the agendas, again, providing for sustainable development and promoting collaboration amongst communities. This helps uh, increase the social performance of uh, tourism industry identification of tourists, the procedures to be cleared f to travel to cross borders, and uh, fostering tourism flow, saving up in airports uh, for airlines, for carriers, increasing security and safety for uh, passengers and protecting countries versus uh, threats from abroad. World Tourism Identification is an app that's important for both tourism and citizens and the tourism industry. World Tourism Identification, the WTI, in provides for two big stages, holiday makers and citizens. This goes into six big ecosystems First, identification of people with a passport, the ID, and the driving license that identifies me as an individual in front of the authority. One more ecosystem, which is healthcare, have a film showcasing that this tool provides for integrating together your PR your vaccination certificates, your COVID uh, tests you have taken. One more ecosystem, information about uh, uh, holiday making resorts, working together with many public agencies and private organizations in the world, providing for protocols of biosafety, which uh, are necessary now, maps and other tools for health promotion purposes. One. There is also a leisure channel, entertainment channel for us to use as we travel about products, uh, tourism related products and services to be used in our daily business, in our trips. The last module, the big one featured on the video is payment. The WTI users get a card, virtual card, a prepaid free of charge cyber card agreed on with uh, big banks for users to get identified with this card for him to use anywhere in the world to get remittances to charge money to spend in daily life when traveling for many purposes it is a tool that's specific that provides four solutions that right now has been designed working together with supported by WTO to resuscitate tourism, trade, commerce, exchanges, border crossing. that hits the development of countries. WTI app by Wanderlust, the company that devised this agenda, working together with many other corporations for identification, European corporations such as Iremia, which is a world leader regarding identification of individuals. The holiday maker gets a holistic app to resuscitate local tourism 
mind you, it provides for development of local economies as well. Let me stress this app safe, secure for institutions, for users in all arenas, for holiday makers with a massive outreach. It is a global innovation. Let me switch the video on, which is more illustrative than what I tell you. App. This app generates a digital identification of a tourist by making a derivation from the physical passport in order to allow citizens and control entities to have all the information one click away. It is very easy. Once you accept the terms and conditions, the app takes you to do a quick scan of your passport, to take an extraction on the photo page by reading the MRZ code that is embedded in it. Then, you will need to register the data that is not in the passport, such as country of residence, email, and phone number. Then, the app asks you to take a selfie doing a liveness detection process, which is a proof of life to make sure that the person is in front of their smartphone and that they do not use a photo or a mask to impersonate that person. Once the app compares the selfie and the passport photo through facial biometry, the tourist's digital identification is generated. All the data entered will be stored in a secure piece of software on the mobile device. With this, we make sure that all the information is safe against any attempt of cyber attack on a server. We protect all your data. Immediately, the app begins to organize the profile. Since our solution is privacy by design, you can decide what personal attributes you want to expose in the digital identification. We want people to be part of this digital transformation the world is facing. I'll be, I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. I welcome any suggestion from you. Let me add, before I close, that Wander, Wanderlust, uh, Wanderlust's WTI is an all-inclusive proposal. We are totally open. It is a must for us to pull together organizations, tools, both uh, public and private, uh, to uh, foster the use of this app. Antonio, I quote Adel and Jalil and their platforms of data. We realize that IT does help us speed up with solutions as yours, which I think is a big tool that uh, kicks back against many pain points in the trip, vouchsafing security and safety that is community-based, since it's, uh, it pulls together so many services for the holiday makers, the travelers uh, benefit. Thus, we are included into a big digital traveling community where we share the, those data. You're right. The WTI app is an integration tool to be used in our daily business, in our daily life. After many years uh, working on it, we realized that uh, tools used in our daily business are specific. They all share this commonality, usefulness. We work on something we all have, namely a handy interconnectivity provides for us uh, working in a network. My model is set on agency institutions uh, for them to use, for their staffs, for citizens to use. That's why we have big agreements with public agencies, with countries, with governments. Uh, this spins uh, off uh, and permeates the whole community, both cross-sectionally and horizontally, vertically. My this tool is provided for by the WTO for further development as agency specialized in tourism holiday making and open to other agencies and institutions, local, regional such as America and Europe and internationally, globally. 
This is the way we go about it. We stress the relevance of the Mediterranean because we belong to a Mediterranean country. I'm a Spaniard. I'm totally Mediterranean. Let me stress uh, the Mediterranean character in it. Our legacy, our cultural legacy in the Mediterranean for us to create uh, this tool. The first globalized territory has been the Mediterranean Basin in history. It is a big community for us to work together using tools and extrapolating to other big territories, networking them such as South America, Asia, Africa and the Mediterranean using the same language and tool as we do now. Thank you, Antonio. Congratulations on your achievement. Um, it's time to, to, to finish this session. Uh, this, uh, this year's edition of, uh, of MEDA with Barcelona has been organized, is being organized by the Association of the Mediterranean Chambers of Commerce and Industry, for ASCAME, the Barcelona Chamber of Commerce, the Union of, for the Mediterranean, the European Institute of the Mediterranean and the Council de la el Consorci de la Zona Franca de Barcelona. Thank you very much uh, to all of them. Thank you to you for making again this uh, Hotel and Hospitality Forum one of the most iconic uh, forum of the Mediterranean Week of Economic Leaders. We've been today talking with, uh, with Amin uh, Moukarsel, President Golden Tulip Mena, and Louvre Hotels Group, uh, and we've uh, shared your vision of how we can grow together, we can make it better together. Uh, Raul Gonzalez, CEO EMEA from Barcelo Group, as well, checking out the moment of the industry and uh, these uh, forecasting uh, trends that he's been sharing with us. From uh, Innovate uh, Solutions, we've been with Adel Ben Youssef and Jalil Mekowar discovering a great data platform where we can try to make much profit out data, not just making data, but uh, working with data. Luis Labe, merci beaucoup uh, as well for sharing your vision on how the attitude on security is changing and has to change. And finally, uh, Antonio Santos del Valle, muchísimas uh, gracias for sharing with us mm -hmm. as well this uh, passport, which is a revolutionary uh, tool uh, which I really uh, wish you a lot of success. Thank you all of you for uh, sharing uh, with me this morning. It has been a pleasure moderating you. I think that we all, we all have uh, shared a lot of knowledge, a lot of information and um, thanks again for joining this session and I wish to you and all your teams and family the very best and uh, looking forward a great Christmas time. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And all Thank the best. You. Ta ta.